Atlantic Cam Wrestling coming your way on KS95 this evening. Got a Blake joined by Cody Weaver from a rowdy crowd at Atlantic High School. Atlantic Camp taking on Kipper Catholic as well as Lewis Central. Video streaming as well at westerniowatoday.com. Titans picked up a win over Kemper Catholic to start. And now we're ready for Atlantic Cam and a Kemper Catholic. The final in the previous match was Lewis Central 51, Kemper Catholic 38. And we'll start at 113 pounds here between Atlantic and a Kemper Catholic with Hass, uh, Josh Hass on the mat for the Trojans against Riley Parkus of Kemper Catholic. Cody, take it away. Both wrestlers on their feet here with the, just starting the period here. Uh, Parkus with a nice double leg shot there, right kind of in the center of the mat. Starts working up front, puts the legs in on the left side, uh, kind of a cross body ride across uh, Hass there. Reaches back for leg. Uh, Hass is doing a good job keeping his base build up there. Parkus is able to reach inside the leg. Now Parkus is going to readjust for more of a Turk style ride. Try to get a tilt forward there, and Josh does a nice job uh, kind of bellying out there a little bit. Parkus again, now he's got the left leg back in. He's got the right arm of Haas, trying to peel that out, get it kind of put behind his head there, and arch his back a little bit and go forward with Haas and get some back points on Haas there. And he's got back exposed of Haas, getting a count. Looks like he's going to get three back points there. And Parkus is going to readjust here while Haas is still trying to keep his shoulder mat, uh, shoulders off the mat there. And Haas is able to kind of come back up to his base here with 50 seconds to go. So it's going to be 5 nothing right now. Parkus, Riley Parkus at Kemper over Josh Haas of Atlantic Cam. Kind of still uh, in the center of the mat. Um, 38 seconds to go here now. And Parkus again readjusts, kind of releases the move, had the back points awarded there. Um, working out front again, riding fairly high, uh, working on Tilton Josh again. He does get a, a one count there, um, comes off to the side now and has Haas on his back again. Uh, and it's gonna looks like it's gonna be another three count. Parkus is trying to adjust here and Haas does a nice job of bellying out again and comes up to his feet. Uh, cannot get an escape there but it comes up to his feet here, working on getting an escape on the edge of the mat, and Parkus does a nice job holding onto that leg there to not allow that escape point at the end of the first period. So it's eight nothing right now, Parkus with the advantage. Here to start the second period, it's gonna be Haas of Atlantic with choice, uh, top, bottom, neutral, or on their feet here, Haas chooses the bottom position, Parkus covers on the left side, switches to the right side, Right away goes to a kind of a crab ride underneath the right arm of Haas and underneath the neck, releases that, kind of comes back to the back. He's got the right arm, a two on one on the right arm. Haas does a nice job rolling that arm out. And Parkus at Kemper goes right back to the legs there on Haas, has the right leg in and controlling the left ankle of Haas. Really working kind of on a three quarter Nelson out front on top there on Haas, readjust back kind of behind the hips a little bit. Again, still has the right leg in. He's working on a half here on uh, Haas on the left side. Haas is doing a good job doing everything he can do to fight that off and it's a tight hold there. Parkus is, comes back out front and Haas does a nice job, you know, circling his hips towards and faces. Parkus and they call it potentially dangerous there on the shoulder of Haas. So we're going to come back to the center with a little bit over a minute to go in the second period. Haas is going to be back down. Again, Parkus covers on that left side as we're under a minute here in the second period to go. It looks like Parkus reaches for a far side cradle there. Haas doing a good job fighting kind of risk control on that. Now Parkus is going to go for a tilt, a two on one tilt there uh, with no luck. Parkus right now um, is kind of working back again. No legs in at this time. Reaching across Haas. Trying to work on something there. He goes back to a crab right out front where he's underneath that neck again. Brings his, wraps his hand kind of back around the back of Haas to keep him broken down. And Josh is doing a good job staying up on his knees here. Um, not allowing any, to, uh, any turn here. No tilts or anything. And kind of working on wrist control here. Trying to get his wrist freed. His hands freed so he can escape, stand up and escape. And Parkus right away goes back to the right leg in now. 
um, with five seconds to go here in the second period. And it looks like that's the way it's going to end. Um, and Haas does a nice job of fighting off any potential back points there towards the end of the second period. So it's still 8-0. It'll be Parkus's choice here in the third period. As we start, Parkus takes the bottom position. Parkus is down and set. Haas will cover the left side. And right away, Parkus stands up on that left side. Haas tries to pick up and elevate Parkus. Parkus right away drops to a standing switch and caught Haas with his hands locked as well. So it's going to be one technical foul for locked hands on Haas and then a reversal for Parkus of Kemper. So with Kemper has a, Parkus has a 11-0 lead now with a minute 35 here in the third period. Working kind of behind, kind of the same. He's going between a two-on-one on the left side and a, Crab on the right side uh, does not have the legs in at this point, but he's uh, working on getting that left leg in. He gets the left leg in at this time, and he's going to be working out front now on Haas, trying to drive forward and get Josh broken down off of his base. Uh, and Josh does a good job staying up on his knees. He releases there. Parkus releases Haas for a one-point escape, so it's going to be 11-1 right now. Parkus in on an outside single. Haas did a nice job sprawling his feet back there, fighting off that takedown. And Haas now goes for a single leg, kind of a high crotch single. Um, has himself extended a little bit here. Parkus is working out front, trying to stuff the head, circle around behind. Haas doing a decent job of uh, um, locking, escaping there. But Parkus is long and lanky and able to lock up a near side cradle on Haas there. Rolls Haas over to his back and gets a quick fall with 34 seconds left here in the third period. So. It'll be Kemper taking the team lead here, 6-0 uh, right now at 113 pounds. Yeah, it's a 2-0 night for Riley Parkus. He also pinned his opponent from Lewis Central earlier. He, the junior came in at 8-1 on the season and picks up a pair of wins. Now we'll have uh, Cruz Weaver taking the mat for Atlantic at 120 pounds. Looks and like George he'll be taking on uh, Jake Haasman there from Kemper. Wrestlers come to the center here, shake hands, and get started in the center here. And Cruz drops in for a single there. Uh, Haas, Haasman did a good job of uh, pushing back there, getting out. Uh, both wrestlers circling in the middle of the mat here as we're started underway here, working on wrist control a little bit, a snap there. Cruz drops into a single leg, goes the opposite direction, um, tries to keep that arm of ha uh, Haasman. Uh, Haasman's able to get that arm out. Cruz right away circles to the left, kind of gets him, tries to get him broken down here. Haasman doing a good job coming back up to his feet. And Cruz works on a near side half. Uh, Haasman comes up to his feet. Cruz kind of releases them for an escape here. Haasman drives in. Both wrestlers on their feet with a minute 20. Two to one right now. Weaver with the advantage over Haasman a Kemper. Both wrestlers doing a little bit of a head snap, working on wrist control there in the center. Shot by Weaver. Uh, nice sprawl by Haasman. Cruz in on a shot again. Haasman defending that shot. Uh, Cruz needs to work on setting up his shots just a little bit better to get in deep there. Cruz uh, working on kind of an inside uh, single there. Is it, Haasman's able to fight it off. They come back up to their feet and escape. Um, we've got 45 seconds left here in the first period. Nice head snap down there by Cruz. Brings ha uh, Haasman to his knees, not able to finish the shot there. Um, Haasman did a nice job controlling Cruz's wrist there. Working on an ankle pick there for Cruz. He's able to switch that to a double. Um, maintains that leg of Haasman there, tries to maintain the leg there. Haasman does a nice job getting to his belly here with 20 seconds to go, so it's gonna be 4-1 right now. We're with the advantage. Weaver out front um, on a crab ride. Haasman trying to get back up to his feet. Cruz is working a uh, crab ride out front, and he has an uh, arm in between there. Now he's got a chicken wing on the left side, and we're going to run out of time here in the first period. So it'll be 4-1. Uh, Cruz Weaver with advantage over Jake Haasman at Kemper right now as we go into the second period. Haasman is coming off a loss by fall against Lewis Central, was pinned by Jordan Smith in the first match of the evening. It'll be uh, Atlantic's choice here in the second period or excuse me, Kemper's choice, Kemper deferred, and uh, Weaver chooses bottom there, bottom position, works on an inside switch here. Uh, Haasman has the ankle 
picked up there, moves back up to the hips, comes forward, has Weaver broken down flat. Uh, Weaver's able to come back up to his knees there. Haasman working behind, works a half on the right side. Now he has a half on the left side. Weaver comes up to his feet here, working on hand, fighting a little bit. Weaver able, is able to turn and face and basically gets a two point reversal there and escape. And right away he works on digging out an arm on that left side of Haasman, has nice control, um, good hip pressure there, has Haasman broken down flat. He's got the Air Force locked up. Um, having a tough time turning uh, Haasman, though Haasman up to his feet here. And, and he's gonna be, could be solid, potentially dangerous here on the elbow of Haasman. So Haasman did a good job there. So Cruz would, had the arm barred up behind, um, had good hip pressure there, comes out front, goes underneath the opposite arm, locks his hand to Haasman's. But Haasman did a good job standing up there. Here to start uh, again. Cruz is uh, try to half Nelson there. Haasman did a good job rolling through. Um, kind of maintained some control here. Weaver's doing a really good job with hip pressure there. Has Haasman broken down there in the first period. Uh, you know, Has Haasman did a good job coming up to his feet here. And Cruz seems to be, you know, keeping his hips in good pressure here with about 30 seconds in the second period. And he's going to work on a tilt here. Um, kind of a ball and chain type tilt and he rolls Haasman over and he's going to get some back points here it looks like he's going to get a, a three two or three count there um, now he works again on that chicken wing on the left side um, he's got that arm barred up and he's got the opposite wrist of Haasman Haasman doing a good job sitting back in putting pressure into Cruz uh, Weaver there as time expires here in the second period so it'll be 8-1 advantage Weaver over Haasman a Carol Kemper as we go into the third period. It'll be uh, Kemper's choice there as they deferred the second uh, period there and uh, Haasman wants to go neutral here in the third period to start. So we're in the center of the mat here, both wrestlers on their feet. Cruz right away with a ankle trip there. Um, has Haasman broken down, releases Haasman back up to his feet. So back in the center here now, um, it's 10 to two right now. Weaver with the advantage in the third period with a minute 40 to go. Both wrestlers on their feet in the center of the mat. Trying to figure out which shot they wanna do next. Again, Cruz goes for an ankle trip, um, catches Haasman's arm. Um, he's working on that again now. He's got the arm barred up. And they're gonna stop it for potentially dangerous. Anytime the arm is barred up, if it goes past the 90 degree or if that elbow comes up off of the back at all, they're gonna stop it to protect the wrestler's shoulder and elbow there. So we've got a minute 20 here. We're gonna start back again. Haasman's in the bottom position. Weaver covers on the left side. Right away drops down, um, catches the wrist of Haasman. Kinda goes into a snow plow there, has his arm in the middle of the armpit of Haasman as he circles around, releases that. Now he goes to a deep waist on the right side, a two on one on the left side, and he's gonna work on digging out that wrist again. Kind of the move that he couldn't finish, I guess, in the first period, he's working on digging out. Haasman doing a good job, though, circling those hips there uh, to try to come around here. Weaver does get the arm barred up on the left side. Good hip pressure, and again, it goes past the 90 degree there and they're gonna stop it for potentially dangerous. So we're gonna come back to the center with 46 seconds to go here. It's 12-2 right now. Weaver with the advantage over Haasman or Carol Kemper. Cruz right away starts with a deep waist there on the right side, works on that wrist again on the left side, uh, goes to a chicken wing there, not able to quite get his hand on the um, middle of the back of Haasman there, but now he's working on the right side, got the arm barred up or control that right arm. Switches back to the left side with 24 seconds to go here. A circle in the head here. And not a lot of crews just riding pretty heavy here on Haasman's hips. And Haasman bellying out here and mo moving the opposite direction here and uh, doing a good job avoiding any back points and any uh, arms being tied up by Weaver there. And that's the way it's gonna end. So it'll be 12-2. Cruz Weaver with a major over Jake Haasman, a Kemper. So it'll be a team score now. 
of 10-0 Atlantic Cam over Carol Kemper through two weights here. We'll take a break. We'll be back with 126 pounds when we come back. And have them back in 30 seconds on KS95. KS95.7 is KSWI Atlantic, a proud part of Meredith Communications. KS95.7. Olson's, Olson's Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and Ski-Doo, trailers to tackle any job from H&H, &H, Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from x -Bart, Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel and Echo. Add factory train technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Underway at 126, Jarrett Hansen for Atlantic Cam. A quick takedown on Kemper Catholic's Jake Smith, and right away turns him to his back. Yeah, he started out there with a real nice fireman's caught uh, uh, Smith's arm there, kind of went in between the legs, used his momentum and then he went to a cross-face cradle on the opposite side as he had um, Smith broken down there. Smith's got him fairly flat on the mat here as time is not uh, running off the clock here, but it's gonna be three back points, so it's five nothing right now in the first period. Uh, going, he's, Smith, or excuse me, Hanson releases that, cradle goes back to the opposite, cross face cradle again now and has Smith broken down flat. He's settled in here. He's got the knee on the side and his head in the temple just like tex textbook would teach us and he ends up getting the fall over Smith. So Jarrett Hansen with the fall over Smith at Kemper. And Atlantic Cam will take a 10-6 lead in the match. Parkas had the pin for Kemper Catholic to put them in front six zip. Then Cruz Weaver comes back with a major decision and now Hanson the pin at 126 pounds. So we go to 132 and here comes uh, one of Atlantic Cam's three rated wrestlers, Ethan Fullman, to take the mat for the Trojans here at 132. Yeah, thanks Bennett for straightening me out on that score. <laughs> Fullman here is gonna be uh, Proposing Colin Ketterbeck of Kemper Catholic. Yeah, Ketterbeck, um, Fullman right away in for a double. Um, takes Ketterbeck down, working on an arm chop here on the right side. Releases Fullman, tries to release Fullman, and Ketterbeck um, does a decent job coming up, but basically there's no, not going to be a takedown there as there was no release, so they do release now. So one point for Ketterbeck. Fullman and Ketterbeck back on their feet with a minute 30 to go here. Outside single by Fullman. Right away circles around behind here. Char uh, has an arm locked up here, working on circle on the head of Ketterbeck, trying to get some near fall points. And Ketterbeck doing a nice job of keeping those shoulders down. It looks like they're going to stop the match here. I don't know if that was a 720 a or a 1080 that <laughs> Fullman had <laughs> spinning around and around and around. Somebody's yeah. got blood there. Fullman's going to go get checked out. Kind of had a front headlock, you know, locked up there. And both wrestlers circled, and Fullman went around about three times compared to Kettlebeck's two there. But they're going to stop the match here for a little bit of blood time. So there's a minute 14 to go here in the first period. It's 4 1. Fullman, Ethan Fullman of Atlantic Cam with the lead over Kettlebeck at Kemper. Um, as we're during blood time. Team score, we've got 10. Uh, Atlantic, 10 points Atlantic and 6 points Carol Kemper. Fullman a pass to state place winner. Played on that Cam state championship football team. Also uh, pretty good in track in the spring and plays baseball for a good Cougar team as well. Coming off a nice finish at the Council Bluffs Classic last weekend. One of three Atlantic Cam wrestlers on the stand in the gold bracket in Council Bluffs. Trojans leading 10-6, Weaver a major decision, and Jarrett ha uh, Hansen had a win by a fall. Now Fullman coming out very aggressive. He was always very active, and that was evident early on in this matchup with Kennebec. Very quick, quick movement, good motion. Um, the legs, uh, Kettlebeck are having a, you know, a tough time keeping up with Fullman's level changes in motion. Fullman, as they come back to the center to end this blood time, uh, Fullman releases them, and they're going to give one point for Kettlebeck there. We're going to go back neutral, so 4-2 with a minute 13 here. And right away, Fullman in a, a, a shot attempt there. Now he goes to a double, 
right away keeps the legs of that double and has exposure to Kettle back of Kemper. And he's going to get, looks like a two count anyway. Switches right away to a opposite far side cradle. Rolls Kettle back over to his back and a fall here in the first period. So it'll be 16-6 now. Atlantic Cam team score over a Kemper. We'll go up to 132 pounds where it'll be Easton O'Brien coming out for Atlantic Cam. Back-to-back -back pins for the Trojans. We'll step aside real quickly. We'll be back with this 138-pound matchup in a moment. At First Whitney Bank & Trust, we're taking personal banking personal. We have all the bells and whistles of online banking, mobile banking with check deposit. But the real First Whitney Bank difference is the people that greet you when you walk in the door or drive up to our windows. And the real people that answer the phone with a smile. Our bank and employees are involved in local organizations, charities, and are your neighbors. First Whitney Bank is a locally owned community bank that take banking and our customers personal. This is Bob here, and if you don't know what to get the men in your life this holiday season, I have a tip for you. Visit the ones with the Napa know-how. I stop every year to get Santa something he needs and something he wants. Slave runners and protective floor mats and some of Santa's favorites are LED lights, flashlights, warm seat covers, and tools. Stop in to Atlantic Motor Supply for great gift ideas from those who have a Napa know-how. Atlantic Motor Supply in downtown Atlantic, because if Santa's not happy, it's a cold day at the North Pole. Easton O'Brien on the mat for Atlantic Cam at a 138, opposing Trent Eyshide of Kemper Catholic. Yeah, Easton came out there with two quick takedowns, uh, started with a fireman's, uh, took Eyshide down, released him, um, went to a quick slide by there by O'Brien, released him, and now took Eyshide down, hipped over for a takedown and two back points, and there was a reversal there by Eyeshide, so we're gonna, it's 8-2 right now with 34 seconds to go, and O'Brien's gonna come back to the center of the mat and be in the bottom position. Eyeshide covers on the left side. As the whistle blows, O'Brien comes up to his feet. Um, feet out front, does a kind of a front roll, catches Eyeshide, um, has the arm of Eyeshide, settles back in behind the head of Eyeshide for a two-point reversal, he keeps that arm on the right side, turns it into a chicken wing, chops the wrist, catches the wrist on the left side, and has Eyeshide on his back, um, getting some back points. Eyeshide really doing a good job of settling, kind of working his way through here. O'Brien readjusts out to the front, catches the arm, and it's going to be end of the first period. It's going to be, it looks like 13 to 4, uh, Easton O'Brien, the advantage over Eyeshide at Kemper. As we go to the second period here, it's going to be Atlantic's choice. Uh, Easton O'Brien's going to go down here to start the second period. Right away on the whistle, switch attempt by O'Brien. Eyeshide did a nice job covering the hips there. O'Brien tries to switch the opposite direction. Uh, Eyeshide casts his hips over, does a nice job covering those, has a grip inside of O'Brien, is able to come back around O'Brien, maintain control for a minute 40 here, or a minute 40 to go here in the second period. O'Brien now up to his feet. Eyeshide lifts, returns to the mat, maintains control, uh, but O'Brien working on that leg kind of behind here, um, uses his legs, uh, some leg power there, kind of in a weird, awkward position. Uh, Eyeshide maintains control, stays behind Easton there, uh, pretty close to the edge of the mat with a minute 13 to go here. 13-4 advantage, O'Brien over Eyeshide. And O'Brien settles back here for a reversal on Eyeshide. Keeps that arm, comes out front here, and gonna work on a kind of a cattle catcher where he works out front. Eyeshide rolls through, rolls back to his belly on the edge of the mat. O'Brien trying to pull him in bounds here. He's got a chicken wing on the left side, has a hand over the right shoulder working on a tilt, and it looks like they're gonna maybe go out of bounds here and come back to the center of the mat in the second period here with 37 seconds to go. So it's 15-4 right now. Easton O'Brien with the advantage over Eyeshide to Carol Kemper. Eyeshide set down in the bottom position. O'Brien covers on the left side. 
right away, tries a cradle on the far side cradle, puts the right leg in. Eyeshide rolls through, um, isn't quite able to escape. O'Brien did a nice job catching the leg. O'Brien circling, but he's got to be careful with his, he's got kind of a, a leg locked up here. Working on a half on Eyeshide, has Eyeshide in trouble. Is settling back here. There's 10 seconds to go here in the second period. He settles over the hips now, locks the leg in, and is able to elevate the head for a fall on Eyeshide with 2.2 seconds to go here in the second period. So it'll be Atlantic Cam now with a 22 six advantage over Carol Kemper through 138 pounds as we come to 145. And 145s, it looks like we have Dante Hedrington coming out for Atlantic Cam. And Three I straight pins for the Trojans. Jared Hansen, Ethan Fulman, Easton O'Brien. As Hedrington takes him out at 145 and waited to see who Kemper Catholic will send out here. Looks it's like going to be Jake Earlbeck. So both wrestlers here in the center. Earl back in with a kind of a double leg shot there. Hedrington doing a nice job of getting his hips back, but Earl Beck does a nice job knowing where he's at and knowing the way that Hedrington is leaning there and goes that opposite direction for a two point takedown. Earl Beck has a two on one on the right side of Hedrington, has a right leg in on Hedrington and continues, continues there to try to break Hedrington down. Hedrington trying to do a mule kick there on the right side to get that right leg out. Earl Beck keeping that leg in though in pretty good position. Hedrington now sits back a little bit. Earl Beck is able to roll through. Earl Beck trying to get that arm of Hedrington over his head and he does and he's gonna try to wanna try to go forward here, get Hedrington turned on his back and Dante Hedrington doing a nice job uh, not allowing him to roll over. He catches the arm of Earl Beck, tries to get his, hips up and Earl Beck does a nice job keeping that leg in on the right side uh, to keep Hedrington from escaping and breaks Hedrington back down with 45 seconds here in the first period. It's two nothing right now. Jake Earl Beck with the advantage over Dante Hedrington. Both wrestlers, um, Earl Beck riding the hips there and, and Dante broken down pretty flat position. Uh, Hedrington working on getting his legs out now. Earl Beck has a, the legs are not in at this time. So Hedrington's able to circle around and Earl Beck does a nice job circling back around and staying behind the hips and kind of shadow wrestling Dante there. Um, close to the edge of the mat here with 14 seconds to go. Earl Beck right now looks like he's working on a cradle on the far side, releases that. Hedrington turns and tries to face. And that's the way we're going to end the first period here. So it'll be 2 nothing right now. Jake Earlbeck of Kemper with the advantage over Dante Hedrington. It'll be Kemper's choice here in the second period. They're going to defer to the third period. And Hedrington takes the bottom position to start the second period. Hedrington's down in the referee's position is set. Earlbeck covers on the left side. Dante has Dante broke down on his left side right now. Working on, uh, looks like a little bit of a hand fight underneath. Dante's working on peeling wrists and peeling halves off. Comes back up to his base as on his knees. Earl Beck goes forward and breaks Hedrington back down to his belly. Right away, Hedrington's able to come back up. Working on a tilt right now, uh, and he's got a tilt on Hedrington. Hedrington's able to roll through that. Um, Working on, uh, he did get two back out of it, so it's going to be four nothing. Earl Beck trying to cast the hips over of Hedrington. Hedrington needs to get his hips out from underneath Earl Beck. Earl Beck's just uh, kind of waiting time here. Hedrington does not have control at this point, but Hedrington is working on getting his hips up. Really doing a nice job with his hips. He's working on a half on Earl Beck, but cannot expose the shoulders past the degree that he needs to. So we've got 50 seconds, 53 seconds left here. In the second period, Dante needs to get his hips out from underneath Earl Beck, out from underneath Earl Beck. But again, Dante's not giving up on that. He's got the half in and he's driving, trying to drive forward. Earl Beck has got his hips over the top of Hedrington's hips though. And it's gonna probably end up in a stalemate unless Hedrington can get his hips up and get some back points here on be a reversal and back points. 
I was thinking stalemate about 30 seconds before <laughs> you brought it up. They were in that position yep. a long time. So he, uh, Hedrington does get the reversal with 15 seconds to go here, has the leg in, but uh, it looks like Earlbeck's coming out the back door and is able to come out from behind the arms of Hedrington for a reversal with five seconds left. So it'll be 6-2 right now, Earlbeck with the advantage over Hedrington, and it'll be Earlbeck's choice here as the second period expires as we go into the third period. Earl Beck's going to take the bottom position here to start the third period. It'll be Hedrington covering on the left side. Earl Beck with a sit out, changes to a switch, is able to come right back around behind De uh, Dante Hedrington there for the reversal. So it'll be 8 2 advantage right now. Earl Beck of Kemper um, works on getting that right leg in. Dante did a nice job catching that ankle, though, as Earlbeck tried to get that leg in. Um, Earlbeck right now working on top. He's got a ball and chain. He's got the left arm of Hedrington tied up. His, his left arm is through the, the legs of Hedrington. He's working on tilting forward on Hedrington. Hedrington doing a good job of keeping his belly down here. Earlbeck's going to try to put a little bit more pressure on him there, though. Get him tilted over. Dante is able to come back to his base. Earl Beck releases the move. We've got right at about a minute left here in the third period. 8 2 right now, advantage. Earl Beck over Hedrington of Atlantic Cam. Dante tries to come up to his feet here. Earl Beck doing a nice job of kind of circling behind. Dante trying to roll through, almost gets caught on his back. And right away, Earl Beck kind of follows around there and goes to a two on one on the right side. Working on peeling that arm out of Hedrington. Hedrington does a nice job circling away from that arm uh, to keep control of his own arm there. And Earl Beck riding the hips here pretty tight. Has good hip pressure. Hedrington's broken down on his right hip here. Still fighting on that control on the right side. Uh, Earl Beck is able to bar that arm up on the right side. We've got 20 seconds to go here. Earl Beck doing a nice job with his knees, using his knees and hands here to try to control Hedrington's arm. He reaches underneath the neck of Hedrington and he's gonna wanna reach either the shoulder or the back of the neck. He releases that and that's the way we're gonna end here. At eight two, it looks like Earl, Jake Earl Beck of Kemper is gonna get a decision over Dante Hedrington of Atlantic Cam. Earl Beck moves to eight and three on the season. And for Catholic within 22 to nine, we'll take a break. We'll come back with the 152 pound weight class in 30 seconds on KS95. After years of wondering why I see more runners than other athletes, I figured it out. Well, a sophomore hurdler explained it to me. This is Dr. Fritz Beyer of Body Basics Chiropractic, and he told me since my hips started knocking up, I lost one second from my time. One second in a 55-second race is less than 2%, but he knew it instantly because the stopwatch told him. In other sports, there's not a stopwatch to tell you when the nagging injury takes 2% from you. To make sure you're giving your 100%, call 254-BODY to get your body back to the basics. Ryan South in with an early shot on Shea Parkus, one of the top wrestlers in the Kemper Catholic lineup, a past state qualifier, a ranked wrestler as Parkus. They're scoreless, just about a half a minute in here at 152. Yeah, South is real long and lanky. Uh, Parkus a little bit shorter, but South's got a real nice reach. It reaches for a single. Parkus is able to sprawl out of that, though. Working kind of on the edge of the mat here with a minute 25 to go. Wrist control. Uh, they're going to come back to the center of the mat. Both wrestlers still on their feet. A shot attempt there by South earlier. Working on arm control of Parkus. Uh, tries to circle around behind here. Um, tries to drop to single. Parkus did a nice job uh, turning and facing. So South was not able to come behind here. Head snap. A single leg shot attempt by Parkus. Comes up to an underhook on South. Both wrestlers separate now with 45 seconds to go here in the first period. Parkus working on head snap, level changes, catches south a little bit. Uh, both wrestlers go out of bounds, though. We're going to come back to the center. South circling here, and Parkus circling, working on a little bit of a head snap, level changes, trying to figure out how to get in on a shot, how to finish a shot with 25 seconds to go here in the first period. So 0-0 right now, South 
uh, wrestling Shea Parkus, the older brother of Riley of Kemper Catholic. Both wrestlers circling. Parkus drops in on an outside single, is able to now switch to a double. He's going to try to bring him in bounds, and they're going to. Uh, South knew exactly where he was at, did a good job uh, getting out of bounds there. Come back to the center here with five seconds to go, 0-0, zero, zero, and that's the way we're going to end the first period. Both wrestlers in the neutral position here. It'll be Atlantic's choice here in the second period. He's going to take the bottom position to start the second period. South Kemper will. Catholic staff was uh, pleading for South <laughs> fleeing the mat there late in the, second, or late in the first period, but no call by the official. South doing a good job of limiting the offense of Parkus, who won a 15-4 major decision against Lewis Central earlier tonight. Parkus working on top here. Parkus is a, a leg rider, works on uh, peeling arms out as well. Right now he's on the hips of South, working on wrist control on the left arm, has a control of the forearm on the right side of South. Tries to peel a two on one now on the left side of South. South's able to bring the elbows in, reaches underneath and tries to peel a wrist. Um, doing a nice job of keeping Parkus from getting the legs in. Not a lot of movement by either wrestler here um, in the center of the mat. And we're going to get a stall call against Brian South on the bottom there. Uh, bellied out, you know, working on hand fighting. Um, Parkus is able now to kind of tie up the left leg of South. Tries to work out front here a little bit. Still working on wrist control here up front. Parkus is working around the head. South is able to get the foot out. Tries to come up, build his base. Works on getting that base built, and right away Parkus is able to get that left leg in. So South goes back to bellying out there, trying to prevent any easy back points by Parkus. Parkus now switches to a Turk, works towards the head, goes underneath the arm to the opposite shoulder. Riding tough here on top, and South really kind of trapped underneath there. Parkus now comes up a little bit. South is able to push back into his elbows, trying to build a little bit of a base in. And it's going to be stall call on Parkus now, Kemper. So it's stall call here on both wrestlers. You know, South, you know, doing everything he can do on the bottom, got stall, uh, called earlier there. But Parkus really hasn't gotten off the hips uh, the whole period here. So the ref says, you know what, it, he's not doing much on the bottom, but you're not doing much to get off the side either. So we've got eight seconds to go here now in the second period. And it's 0-0 right now. Parkus both legs in uh, as time expires in the second period. So we'll go to the third period. It'll be Parkus's choice. Parkus is going to go in the bottom position to start the third period. South will cover on the left side of Parkus. Stand up right away by Parkus and a release. Um, turns and faces south, so both wrestlers are on their feet right now. one nothing. Parkus with the advantage over south of Atlantic Cam in the third period with a minute 40 to go here. Parkus with a shot attempt there. South doing a nice job of stuffing the head and getting his feet back. You know, shoelaces down on the mat. Tries to switch off to a single there, and Parkus right away tries to come back around here and switches to a double, or a single, outside single. As they exit the mat, we're going to come back to the center, center with a minute 30 here. 1-0 right now. Parkus with the advantage over South. South was in on an earlier shot, and it's been a lot of motion now by Parkus here. Kind of sense on his feet. Uh, working on South, working on tying up that arm of Parkus. Shucks down. A shot attempt there by South. Snap down by South. They're going to come back to the center, or at least wrestle on the edge of the mat. South with an attempt there. Parkus doing a nice job getting his hips back. Parkus right away drops into a single. South has got a, a sprawl in here trying to stuff the head, and Parkus is doing a good job circling, trying to get two points. He gets his right arm escaped here, and he's going to get two points as they go out of bounds here. Uh, Parkus was able to get that arm in between, or excuse me, in between South and around South to get awarded the two points. So we're back at the center here with 44 seconds to go. South in the bottom position. Parkus covers the left side. 
kind of working up high here. Parkas comes off the side. South circling back towards. Parkas working on kind of heavy out front here. Again, kind of a crab ride underneath the neck, over the shoulder, working on the left side of South. He kind of switches his hips over to the right side. South working on getting his hips back up. He's up to his knees now. And Parkas riding pretty tough here with 10 seconds to go in the third period. South is up to his feet here, working on peel and wrist. It does get an escape here. A shot attempt by South, and time's going to expire. So Parkas is able to hold on there. A nice shot attempt there right at the end with about three seconds to go. Him not able to finish it here. So it's going to be 3-1. Parkas with the decision over Brian South of Atlantic Cam. Back-to-back -back decision victories for Kemper Catholic. They're within 22-12 to 12 as we go to 160 pounds. But we'll step aside first back in half a minute on KS95. Hey, Rudolph, check out Santa's new ride. Whoa, what sounds awesome. Looking to put a little horsepower into your Christmas? Second Street Repair in Atlantic has what you're looking for. The world's hottest mufflers from Flowmaster, Magnaflow, Hooker Arrow, Chamber Exhaust, and more. Get a gift certificate from Second Street Auto in Atlantic. Perfect for Hercules tires, Flowmaster exhaust, access bed liners, or any general maintenance someone on your list might need in their vehicle. Second Street Repair in Atlantic. Owen Hoover gets the nod for Atlantic Cam at 160. Owen Hoover facing Hayden Stout of Kemper Catholic. Hoover with a shot as they're underway and scoreless in the first period. Here we get a minute 30 here to go in the first period. Decent shot attempt by Hoover there. Um, he's taking on Hayden Stout, a uh, Carol Kemper uh, senior. Both wrestlers kind of on the center of the mat here working on collar ties. Ties, shot attempt there by Stout. Um, circle back towards the center here. Still on our feet with a minute 10 to go here. Head snap by Hoover, another head snap. Working on an underhook on the left side. Is able to get Stout a little bit out of control. Stout regains his feet, foot here. Snaps on Hoover. Hoover working down low on his knees. Um, not able, Stout not able to get underneath there for a leg shot. Snap down by Stout. Hoover goes down to his knees, comes back up to his feet with 42 seconds to go here. Working on the edge of the mat again, and it's going to be backing out. Um, they're going to call backing out, stalling by Hoover there as we come back to the center with 30 seconds to go here. Nice shot there by Hoover. Nice cross face by Stout. Both wrestlers are going to kind of maintain position here. Hoover pushing in a little bit here on Stout. Stout backing up a little bit. Both wrestlers release. Back on their feet here. Separated. 10 seconds to go now. Hoover with an outside single shot attempt there. Stout able to fight that off. Another shot attempt there. Hoover doing a nice job circling around behind here. and We're going to end the first period here. In the second period, Stout of Kemper defers, and uh, Hoover is going to take the bottom position here. So no score at this point. Hoover versus Stout of Kemper. Hoover in the bottom position. Stout working out front again, kind of has the left leg of Hoover trapped back by the ankle, working on an inside ride, inside the leg ride by Stout on the right leg. Hoover's able to peel that out, comes up to his feet a little bit, brings Hoover back down. Hoover's got a half of a base build up on his knees there, right arm posted, needs to knee slide up. Stout doing a good job controlling the left arm of Hoover though, trying to drive forward, has Hoover's arm trapped, got a two on one now on the left side of Hoover. Hoover working on peeling the wrist here, trying to get up to his feet. Uh, wrist control there by Hoover, but Stout doing a good job, dropping now to an ankle, continues to drive forward. Sit out attempt here by Hoover. Stout trails behind here, tries chopping the right arm of Hoover. Works on a two on one. Again, Hoover doing a good job coming up to his feet. Needs to stand completely up here. Um, goes back down to his knees. 
and Stout is able to follow kind of behind there, stays behind the hips. Hoover's working on tying up the right elbow of Stout. Doing a good job keeping the wrist open there of Hoover on the right side. Reaches back for the head. Stout continues to ride two on one on that left side of Hoover. Hoover not able to get that arm freed out. They're gonna go out of bounds here and it's gonna be a stall call on Kemper because basically he's ridden the hips. Uh, he's following here and he goes out of bounds. So it's gonna be a potential caution here for Stout covering too early. He's got permission now, covers the left side. Hoover sits out. Um, Works on a little bit of a, maybe a, a roll, um, but settles back to his knees. Hoover's got the left arm tied up, again by Stout. Um, just one arm on there. Stout really riding the ankle of Hoover on the left side. And he's gonna ride it out here to expire here in the second period. So it's 0-0 zero, zero still. It's gonna be Stout's choice of Kemper. He's gonna take the bottom position to start the third period. No score so far in this match by either one of these wrestlers. Hoover covers on the left side here. Right away, Stout comes up to his feet a little bit. Hoover doing a nice job chopping, breaking down. Comes out front though on Stout. His hips are too high here. He needs to get back behind the hips. Stay back behind here. Hoover doing a good job of kind of working out front also on that crab right underneath the arm over the head, breaks Stout down, goes now, switches to a half, Stout peels that off, works on, he releases Stout, comes back to the center here, so he's got a, he's gonna have to score here now with a minute 26 here to win the match. Both wrestlers on their feet, one nothing right now, Stout a Kemper with the lead, a release there by Hoover, a shot attempt there by Hoover, Stout working on Kind of a single leg there, both arms tied up by Hoover. Pushing in, Hoover, a shot attempt there by Stout um, as they go out of bounds, a nice double leg shot there by Stout. Uh, we're gonna come back, we've got one minute left in the third period, it's 1-0 right now. Stout a Kemper with the lead over Owen Hoover of Atlantic Cam. Both wrestlers on their feet in the center of the mat, kind of a collar tie. Uh, Hoover needs to get up off of his knees and stay in better position. Uh, Stout's gonna try to stuff that head and circle around behind here. And he's able to circle around behind. It's three nothing right now with 40 seconds left here. Stout of Carol Kemper with the advantage. Hoover sits back to his um, rear a little bit. Stout is able to push into him, get him brought back to his elbows and knees. 25 seconds to go here now. S Hoover reaches for the head, circles behind. Um, Stout is able to follow behind here, cover. We've got about 10 seconds to go here now in the third period. It's three nothing, Hayden Stout. Hayden's a kid that's um, potentially committed to BV next year to wrestle one of the colleges he's looking at. So as time expires here in the third period, Stout will get the 3-0 decision over Owen Hoover of Atlantic Cam. So it'll be 22-15 right now, Atlantic Cam with the team lead as Caden Stutzman comes out for Atlantic Cam at 170. Plenty of gas left in the tank there late for Hayden Stout as he's able to do all of his scoring late and get a three nothing victory over Owen Hoover of Atlantic Cam. As the Knights with wins from Shea Parkus, Jake Earlbeck and now Hayden Stout winning three in a row. And we're underway at 170 with Caden Stutzman on the mat for Atlantic Cam. He's taking on Bryce Wiskus of Kemper Catholic. Stutzman coming off a great performance last weekend. Hitting all but one of his opponents. Stutzman with a close takedown there. Right, his knees were out of bounds, so they come back to the center. Working on an inside tie there. Stutzman circling here, close to the edge of the mat. We're gonna go out of bounds here as we come back to the center here. Stutzman just seeming to be on the attack and has Wiskus back on his heels. Stutzman, number two this week by IA Wrestle in 2A at 170 pounds. Wiskus able to drop into an outside single there, continues to drive forward, has his head uh, kind of trapped in between the legs there. Stutzman's gonna go 
go the opposite direction, they're probably not going to get a takedown as they're both out of bounds. So um, did, Stutzman did a nice job knowing where his hips were at. Um, unfortunately, his hips landed out of bounds. So back on our feet here with a minute nine to go. Stutzman with a front headlock now reaches for that opposite ankle right away, drops to a, a cradle there, has Stutzman on his back. Stutzman is able to roll through uh, for a two-point takedown here, and Stutzman's really heavy on the head here. Has Wiskus rolled over, getting back points, and it looks like he's going to get the, the fall here on Wiskus of Kemper. We've got a lot of time left here, about 40 seconds left in the first period. And it's going to be Caden Stutzman with the winner there. A little bit of a surprise, maybe back exposure to Stutzman, and Stutzman's able to get his composure, finish rolling through, and catch Wiskus on his back and finishes with a fall. Yeah, got himself in a dangerous position, but strong enough to get out of it and get the pin. Atlantic Cam 28, Kemper Catholic 15. As Stutzman wins by fall, we're back with the 182-pound matchup next, featuring Jared Armstrong back in 30 seconds on KS95. We'll go right into the 182 pound matchup. Jarrett Armstrong on the mat for Atlantic Cam as the Trojans have extended their advantage to 28 15. He's taken on Tate Byrett of Kemper Catholic. Both wrestlers in the kind of in the center here working on collar ties, both of them fighting the collar ties off. Jarrett continues to move forward. Going to right on the edge of the mat here. Shot attempt, in, outside single there by Armstrong. Able to circle around behind here for a takedown. Works on the left side here, chopping that left arm out. Breaks him down to his hips. Peels that left arm out on Birret of Kemper with a minute 15 to go here. 2-0, there's the advantage right now. Armstrong with a takedown. Working on continuing to drive forward. Has Barrett broken down flat. Barrett is able to come back up to his knees. Jarrett's got the left arm tied up of Barrett working on the left side. Barrett tries to sit out. Armstrong is able to follow out of bounds, and they're going to go out of bounds. So 57 seconds, we're going to come back to the center here. Barrett of Kemper is going to be in the bottom position. Armstrong of Atlantic Cam will cover, and he's going to cover on the left side. It's right away on the whistle. Armstrong does a nice job catching the kind of the chicken wing or the arm on the left side. Uh, Barrett is doing a good job though of maintaining his hip, his hips, he's up to his knees and posted on his elbows. Armstrong comes out front a little bit here. Now he comes back behind the hips to the trail. 30 seconds to go in the first period. Armstrong with the advantage. Peels out the left arm of Barrett. Uh, Barrett did a nice job rotating that arm, getting that lock broken free. Uh, comes out front here, and Armstrong, right on the edge of the mat, has the arm barred up, and they're going to go out of bounds with 17 seconds to go here. Come back to the center. Beard will go down in the bottom position. Jarrett Armstrong of Atlantic Cam will cover. He's going to cover the right side this time. Covers the right side right away on the whistle, drops an ankle. Barrett goes down to his stomach. Armstrong, again, working wrist control on the left side. Trying to peel an arm out. Sucks. Barrett back. Try to get some near fall there. Barrett does a nice job sitting back up. Armstrong gets a little bit high here. Circles behind here. No uh, points awarded there. Almost an escape there by Barrett at the end of the first period. It'll be Kemper's choice here for the second period. And he's going to defer. So Armstrong will go in the bottom position to start the second period. With a 2-0 advantage, Armstrong takes the bottom position. Barrett of Carroll Kemper covers on the left side. Now he tries to suck back. Armstrong coming up to his feet, able to circle around for a nice escape there. A shuck by attempt there by Armstrong. Both wrestlers on their feet. Armstrong continuing to move forward a little bit. 3-0 now, Jarrett Armstrong with the advantage over Barrett at Kemper. Shot attempt there, kind of a slide by attempt there by Armstrong a little bit, he's got the arm tied up. Another shot attempt, 
both wrestlers are circle, circling. Armstrong shot in there, left his arms a little bit exposed. Um, he's going to go for a headlock here. He's able to headlock Barrett to his back. Has Barrett uh, flat on his back with a minute five to go here. A lot of time to fight a headlock in a position like that. And Armstrong gets the fall in the second period. So it'll be a 34-15 advantage now. Atlantic Cam over Kemper as Brendan Casey comes out at 195 pounds. And that seals the duel for the Trojans up 34-15 with just three weight classes left. We'll step aside for 30 seconds back in half a minute on KS95. Cass Health in Atlantic, yeah, Iowa, is excited left, right? to introduce our newest orthopedic <laughs> surgeon, Four. Dr. Four. Blake Bodendorfer. Oh, yeah, Bodendorfer we started at 13. My, my in my sports bad. medicine and shoulders. He will provide care to patients of all ages at Atlantic Medical Center Surgery Clinic. His surgical specialties include rotator cuff repair, shoulder replacements, and sports medicine-related injuries. Learn more about Dr. Bodendorfer at CassHealth.org. Cass Health. Neighbors caring for neighbors. Brendan Casey has Will Healy of Kemper Catholic on his back and gets the fall 28 sec 29 seconds of time of fall. Brendan Casey not wasting any time at 195 as he comes right up, takes down Will Healy and puts him on his back and that officially seals the deal for Atlantic Cam up 40 to 15 now in the duel with Kemper Catholic. And at 220 pounds, we're going to have a Mundorf for Atlantic Cam on the map, Miles Mundorf. And the Kipper Catholic has Cal Wanniger as their 220 pounder, but they've been bumped, they bumped him up to heavyweight in their uh, prior matchup with Lewis Central, and he got a, a quality win, a 12 4 major decision. They're going to look like they're going to bump him up again as Braden Reisberg will take the mat for Kipper Catholic against Miles Mundorf. Mundorf with a bear hug and pushes him off the side out of bounds. They'll come back to the middle, standing up. Armstrong with a, or excuse me, Mundorf there with a front headlock, kind of shucks down, tries to come back around behind right, Reesberg. Reesberg does a nice job coming back up to his legs. Again, Mundorf going forward here. Uh, need to be circling a little bit more by Reisberg. I'm sure he's talking to both wrestlers, saying he'll try to stay in the center here, circle. Mundorf with an underhook on the right side. Again, now he's got a double underhook, is able to kind of come around a little bit behind Reisberg. Reisberg doing a good job, though, Getting out of that, drops to a single leg here. Catches Mundorf in a three-quarter Nelson. Miles is able to escape out of that. Work on double underhook here, and we're going to get a stall call on Riceberg. Um, Mundorf needs to get into a single leg here. Both wrestlers separate with a minute to go here in the first period. Mundorf with a little bit of a head attempt shot there. A slide by. Both wrestlers kind of on their feet. Underhook now by Mundorf on the right side of Riceberg. Tries to elevate that. No real low shot attempts by either one of these wrestlers, but a lot of upper body pushing and chest bumping. 30 seconds to go now. Mundorf with a little bit of a head of the collar tie there. Now go switches back to an underhook. Goes, tries to go for a double underhook. Riceberg's able to circle away from that. With 19 seconds to go here. Both wrestlers exactly in the center of the mat. Now underhook again by Mundorf. No shot attempts really on any low leg, le low leg shot here. It's all been upper body here in the first period as time expires. So it's 0-0 zero, zero, Riceberg and Mundorf. It'll be Atlantic's choice here. Now they're going to give it to Kemper again. Kemper defers. Mundorf will go in the bottom position to start the second period. Score 0-0. Miles Mundorf goes in the bottom position. Riceberg covers the left side. Reaches for an ankle right away. Mundorf tries to stand up. Kind of a trap the leg of Mundorf. Mundorf is up to his feet now. Turns and faces. Um, gets a one-point escape here. Goes to a front headlock of Riceberg. Shucks him down, needs to pull him all the way down to the mat though. Takes Riceberg and he's gonna throw Riceberg to his back. Catches him. Um, Mundorf keeps his knees in bounds here. He's in pretty good shape, getting back points right on the edge of the mat. With a minute 29, a lot of time to go here. He needs to just settle chest on chest. He's gonna be out of bounds right now. His foot's out of bounds, so it's gonna be out of bounds here. So it'll be six 
zero right now. Mundorf with the advantage with a minute 21 here to go in the second period. So he had an escape here so far in the second period and is able to take Reeksburg down and take him to his back. Mundorf covers the left side, works on chopping left here, inside wrist on the left side. Tries to work on peeling that arm out on the left side. Reichsberg doing a good job turning his hips on the opposite direction, keeping that arm tucked in there. Mundorf now out to the side using some leverage. Uh, Reichsberg is able to come up to his base here. Mundorf right away takes him back down flat on his belly. Now he works out front on a front head walk here. He's walking around, circle on the head, readjust, is able to catch Reichsberg. Um, on his back and gonna get some back points, at least a two count, looks like two back points, and Reisberg does a nice job getting back to his belly. Mundorf switches now to the other side and is able, gonna able to circle that head. Um, Reisberg doing a nice job again, turning and facing. And they're gonna go out of bounds, and it's gonna be a stall call on Mundorf, uh, basically for uh, picking up an ankle and following Reisberg out of bounds. So. Come back to the center here with 28 seconds to go in the second period. Mundorf, Miles Mundorf of Atlantic with an 8-0 advantage over Reesburg of Kemper. Team score, it's 40 points for Atlantic Cam, 15 for Carroll Kemper. We've got 15 seconds left in the second period. Mundorf working on the right side on just a half Nelson is able to roll Reesburg over and is gonna get a count here. Reesburg doing a nice job of rolling kind of almost through and then Mundorf does a good job of catching that arm trapping him we've got two seconds left here and it'll be time expiring so it's going to be 11 0 right now mundorf with the advantage it'll be kemper's choice here in the third period and he's going to want to go neutral here in the third period so reeseberg's choice there we go neutral on our feet 11 0 right now miles mundorf with the advantage of reeseberg in this particular situation you want to make sure you don't tie up too much uh, get in a throwing position Mundorf goes through bubble, double underhook right now. Um, switches, tries to switch back to a front headlock. Um, now back to a double underhook, releases. Some separation there by both wrestlers. Collar tie by Reesberg as they circle here with a minute 35 to go. In the third period, Mundorf again with that nice front headlock is able to pull him down, circle around behind for a two point takedown so it's 3 13 0 right now miles mundorf with the advantage minute 20 to go here in the third period mundorf riding the left side chops down on the left arm has reeseberg broken down flat puts a, a half in on the right side of reeseberg he's gonna go ahead and release reeseberg back up to his feet um, release up to his feet one point escape for reeseberg so it's 13 1 right now both wrestlers come back up to their feet, wrestle on the edge of the mat. An underhook attempt there by Mundorf as they go out of bounds. We're gonna come back to the center with 54 seconds to go here in the third period. Mundorf with a 13-1 advantage. Working on kind of a head tall, uh, front collar tie again. Um, is able to shuck Reisberg down, but Reisberg circles. As he circles, he goes out of bounds. We're gonna come back to the center with 40 six seconds now here. Mundorf gonna work on that front headlock again. Snap the head down and get over the top of that head. Now Mundorf works on both arms, collar or underhook, gets that front headlock again. He's gonna try to pull him down. He pulls him down, he's gonna be out of bounds though. Gets a two point takedown, so it's gonna be 15 to one right now with 25 seconds to go in the third period. Mundorf's gonna try to get one more takedown here and make it a technical fall. With 15-2, he releases Reisberg back up to his feet with 25 seconds to go here. Again, Mundorf working on uh, head snap there. Reisberg, you know, he's not giving up by any means here. A Little bit of a, uh, maybe some good heavy head snaps, it looks like. We come back to the center, 15 seconds to go here. Mundorf needs to finish this off with a tech fall. He's had a good match dominating so far. Uh, he's got a snap down here and finish. Drops to a single leg as they go out of bounds and he follows Reesberg out, but it's gonna be five seconds left here in the third period. So he's gonna have to hurry up and get a shot here. Duck underneath that arm, get a shot at attempt here to finish for a tech fall. Mundorf shot attempt there. 
works on a outside single. Reesburg doing a nice job uh, getting his hips out here. So it'll be 15-2 advantage, Miles Mundorf at 220 over Reisberg of Kemper. Now the heavyweights will come to the mat. Nathan Kaiser, Atlantic Kim, Cal Wanniger for Kemper Catholic. 44-15, Atlantic Cam in front of the Knights. They've got Lewis Central to take on two to finish off the evening as we get underway at heavyweight. Cal, Cal Wanniger, one of uh, Kemper's, you know, probably three kids. Uh, Parkus kid was rated at one time. Wanniger's been rated. Uh, really a big physical kid. Um, drops into a double there, takes Kaiser down to the mat. Has a chicken wing on the left side. Kaiser doing a nice job of trying to fight that out. Wanniger now switches to the right side, goes to a half on the right side, has Mundorf stacked up on his shoulders and is able to get the fall. Um, quick, uh, quick exposure there on the shoulders by Kaiser, but um, shake hands and that's a quick pin for Cal Wanniger over Nathan Kaiser of Atlantic. We'll do uh Stay right here as we go to 106 pounds. Aiden Smith for the Trojans after Cal Wanniger for Kemper Catholic gets a pin at 285, makes it 44 to 21 in favor of Atlantic Cam. And we started at 113, so 106 pounds is the final matchup. Aiden Smith against Owen Neppel. Right away, Aiden drops into a fireman's air, uh, releases Neppel back up to his feet. 2 1 right now, Smith with the advantage. Another fireman's. Keeps that arm this time. Comes around behind here. Goes to a two on one. He's gonna work on a tilt here. He's working on the left arm of Nepple. Now goes to a kind of a ball and chain up in between the legs. Ties up here. Got his elbow in the back and he's gonna tilt forward on Nepple. Uh, tilt him forward here to try to get some back points. He get, get, has exposure here. Nepple does a nice job though of kind of sitting up as that came loose a little bit on Smith. It's 4-1 right now. Smith right away drops to a chicken wing on the right side. Nepple doing a good job of turning and facing, but Smith quick enough there to kind of track behind here, able to fall. He's got a chicken wing on the right side. He's got the left wrist trapped of Nepple, and he's got a five count for back points. So it's gonna be three back points. He's working on settling here. Um, get both shoulders touching there. Comes back around front here, releases that right arm. Now he goes to work on the left arm, so it's 7-1 right now, Smith with the advantage. Got a, working on a tilt on the other side now. Working on a chicken wing tilt. He's got him tilted over, getting a count. Nepple trying to do a good job, you know, really trying to get his hips up and his shoulders up off the map, but Smith is gonna be successful getting three more back points. So it's 10-1 right now. 15 seconds to go here in the first period. Another chicken wing here and it's tight this time. Uh, Smith scoops the head here of Neppel. It looks like it's gonna be, as time expires here, three more back points for Smith as the shoulders are not close enough to the mat. So it'll be 13-1 right now after the first period. It'll be Kemper's choice. Kemper's gonna choose neutral here. Both wrestlers come back to the center here in the second period. Neppel working on a kind of a collar tie on Smith. Smith is able to release a little bit. Right away drops an outside single, circles towards that leg and they're gonna stop it for potentially dangerous on the knee of Neppel. Both wrestlers on their feet again it's to start the second period. A shuck by there by Smith for two more points. So it'll be 15 to one. Smith right now has a cradle locked up. Opposite side, he sits back with Nepple. Gets a one count. Smith able to execute about every single thing he wanted to in that first period. Late in the first, the official had started to raise his hand like he looked like he wanted <laughs> he to slap, slap the mat and then hesitated and time ran out. Clock issue here, No, now it's showing a minute to go but not moving in the second period yeah, Smith, as Smith tries to turn his opponent to his back. Nepple, Nepple tied up there flat on his back. Nepple really doing a good job fighting that pin. Uh, finally gives in to it there with about a minute left and so it'll be uh, 50 to 21, the final team score. 
um, Aiden Smith there of Atlantic Cam with a fall. We'll come back to recap it right after this. We'll take a one minute break. We'll give you the match by match results of the Atlantic Cam 50 to 21 win over Kemper Catholic in 60 seconds on KS95. Looking for the perfect gift for someone on your list? Visit Outfitters Plus Outlet Store in Atlantic. At Outfitters Plus, you'll find hundreds of great gift ideas, sweatshirts, tees, fleece, hats, and more. The best thing is, everything can be personalized. Add your team logo and your name. If your students reach that special milestone, celebrate with a letter jacket they'll wear with pride at a great price. So now's the time to check your list and get to Outfitters Plus Outlet Store in Atlantic. Have a perfectly personalized Christmas. Turkeys can't fly, but you can. Fly into the Super Bowl for Glow Bowling every Friday and Saturday night at 7. Fun night out with family? Glow Bowl. Date night? Glow Bowl. Birthday party? Glow Bowl. Nothing to do on a Friday or Saturday night? Glow Bowl. The Super Bowl has great lanes, a fun atmosphere, and even if you're not a great bowler, the lights are off and no one's watching you. Get into the Super Bowl and just let loose. Glow Bowl. Every Friday and Saturday night at the Super Bowl. Highway 71 in Atlantic. Aiden Smith caps off the Atlantic Cam victory with a win by a fall, and the Trojans win 52-21 over the Knights. It started at uh, 113 pounds with Riley Parkus of Kemper Catholic getting a pin against Josh Hass of Atlantic Cam, and the Knights were in front 60-0 with the Trojans. Came back with four straight victories. Cruz Weaver started it with his 12-2 major decision. Jared Hansen won by fall. Also uh, winning by fall was Ethan Fullman, Easton O'Brien. Won by fall as well. Three straight pins for Atlantic Cam to go in front. And then uh, it was at 152 pounds. A close match, low scoring match. Shea Parkus against Brian South and Parkus of Kemper Catholic wins a 3-1 decision. Hayden Stout of Kemper Catholic at 160 won a 3-0 decision over Owen Hoover. It was Atlantic Cam's Caden Stutzman winning by fall over Kemper Catholic's Bryce Wiskus in a minute 19 at 170 pounds. Atlantic Cam getting pins from Jared Armstrong at 182 and Brendan Casey at 195. Miles Mundorf was going for the tech fall. He's going for the pin and he was going for the tech fall. He ended up with a major decision over Braden Reesberg. And then uh, Cal Wanniger of Kemper Catholic pinning Nathan Kaiser of the Trojans. And Aiden Smith finished it off, uh, as we mentioned, with his uh, pin over Owen Neppel, two minutes and 59 seconds, the time of fall. Cody, uh, final thoughts on Atlantic Cam's 50 to 21 win over Kemper Catholic. I thought, uh, you know, the, the matches that you would expect to be um, kind of swing matches. Um, I thought, you know, Atlantic stayed in it and battled. They kept the matches close. You know, both Parkus brothers are, have been a, a known name up there at Kemper. And the Wanniger kid is tough as well. Um, you know, Owen Hoover, I thought, did a really good job, you know, coming in and filling in a spot there. Um, so we'll take on uh, Lewis Central now, and Lewis Central would beat Kemper. So we'll see how the matchup between the weights, I guess, goes during this duel, if it will be similar matches to the Kemper or if it's going to be, you know, a, a little bit different. We will send it back to the studios as they get set for the second duel here. And we'll be back a little bit later on with the Atlantic Cam Lewis Central matchup. Back to the studios for now on KS95. 